Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and this clip right here, this is um, a clip where um, Andy Sheckman from uh, Miles Franklin, who is one of my sponsors, um, had done an interview with Brad Combs, and this section right here, he's, a, he's talking about the COMEX 589 uh, and, and the rule and the manipulation of markets by the big guys. Listen to this. <laughs> But look, over the last several years, what we have seen is a concerted effort by the very powerful uh, money centers, the central banks in particular, to use the Western suppression of the COMEX markets to accumulate natural resources. And it, look, it's not just um, gold and silver. It's you know, there's a long list of, of commodities, um, grain, soybeans, soybeans, aluminum, gold, uranium, titanium. I mean, the list goes on and on. That would be China. And it goes to the point that these countries are, the reason they're not bitching yet is because they're accumulating it. But once it becomes obvious that the availability of, of commodities is becoming, you know, very, very scarce, it, that no one wants to sell it at these make-believe prices and the public realizes my goodness what have we been missing maybe in concert with um a, a breakdown in the financial system or the banking system that's when you would see that type of implementation where the public you know manipulation be damned uh, give it to me i need it now well that's when you would start to see the circuit breakers be put into place in the meantime people pulling the strings well they don't want the circuit breakers triggered because that shines a light on what they're doing instead they continue to manipulate and suppress the system not only the actual exchanges but the rhetoric surrounding them in order for them to run cover for the de-dollarization to be sitting in the catbird seat when the rest of the world says oh my god what have i missed and bang you start to see the circuit breakers triggered and uh, that's something I think you could definitely see happening, but that would be a very late stage phenomena where the big, smart, sophisticated, well-funded and well-informed traders have already, you know, they're sitting on their deck seat, uh, you know, uh, see, uh, sipping a, a margarita, watching the chaos unfold and as the rest of the people scurry for whatever scraps are left. That's what the digital asset investor plans on doing, but it won't just be a margarita. It will also be cheese dip now he's right they've been manipulating the the gold and silver markets for years you know who they are um but it's wall street and in, in general but it's not just that and and by the way while we're on the gold topic miles franklin is my sponsor you can um i'm that's what i'm doing right now i'm buying gold and i'm buying i think they've been suppressing gold and silver for years i'm buying gold and silver and then, um, because I think that's going to be a part of this flip over to the digital system. And I'm also, yes, as of yesterday, I was accumulating, I'm, what I'm trying to do is get to one Bitcoin, I only want to own one, with all this ETF talk, talk, and it's really probably for me more of a short term play, one Bitcoin in my IRA, or I trust capital IRA that is, um, which is one of my sponsors too, by the way. Use DA, code DAI Gold when you email Miles Franklin to get gold or precious metals info at milesfranklin.com, 952-929-7006. But it's not just gold they're manipulating. This is from back in 2018-19, okay? We had the same type of crypto winter back then that we've been going through recently. And I said, watch this and imagine these same Wall Street guys, what they could do if they had a major U.S. regulator in their pocket, crushing prices with crypto crackdowns for two years right before allowing them to open Bitcoin ETFs or before flipping a switch on the new digital financial system. FYI, by pure coincidence, Gary, Gol uh, Gary um, Gensler worked for Goldman Sachs and has had George Soros and Jamie Dimon meetings on his public calendar. Multiple Jamie Dimon meetings and at least one or two George Soros meetings. I always wondered, 
George Soros is famous for manipulating currencies. Why would the SEC chairman of the United States have a reason to be meeting with a guy who is famous for manipulating countries' currencies and destroying them? Why would he be meeting with that guy? Now listen to this. This is Tika Tori with Glenn Beck back, I think this was back in 2018. On September 12th, Jamie- Many of you have seen it, but this is worth watching over and over and over so you understand the game. Simon says Bitcoin is a fraud. He says he'll fire anyone of his traders buying Bitcoin. Bitcoin drops 24%. When Jamie Dimon speaks, people listen, people listen. So that weekend, we found out that the largest buyer of a, of a Bitcoin fund that's in Europe, that buys physical Bitcoin, right? The largest buyer was Morgan Stanley and JP Morgan. And that's not illegal. He says it's a fraud. It says he'll fire anyone that buys it. Yes. And at the same time, his company is buying it. His company is buying it. So, it's just, I mean, so unethical. Right. Okay, George Soros. George Soros, in January 24th, (laughs) price was already down, calls Bitcoin a bubble, says Bitcoin is the worst, you know, the worst investment in the world. Don't buy Bitcoin. Don't buy Bitcoin. Basically, he throws uh, gasoline on the fire yeah. at this point. And then what do we find out? So he says, bubble here. It drops 44%. Right. And then here in April, for two months later, guess what we find out? Yeah. His $26 billion family office has approval to buy cryptocurrency. Right. And you only, we only knew about it publicly Right. Here, here, and yes. this is the kind of thing that George George Soros is famous for this talking yeah. the sterling down. Yeah. And what did he do? He stole the pensions of all the little people. Yeah, made a billion. Yeah. Okay. So then here now, Goldman Sachs. This again, February seventh. Most cryptocurrencies will crash to zero. Now I remember when they said this in February, and I had through my network, I knew that Goldman Sachs was setting up a crypto trading desk. Absolutely knew they were setting up a crypto trading desk. And I remember you telling me that. Right, and then, uh, of course, they were denying it. No, we're not, no, we're not, no, we're not. Price falls down 27%, and then what do we find out? We find out here, uh, they say BTC zero, and then we find out just before May, new trading desk. Not only that, they put $400 million to buy a cryptocurrency trading platform. So they play the game, folks. Now, so against that backdrop, here's the Grayscale CEO talking about the the Bitcoin ETF. And if you do one, you do all. Turn uh, around and talk about another topic. Michael, uh, it's been almost two weeks since you won your lawsuit against uh, the SEC seeking to have your Bitcoin trust convert to an ETF. The SEC has 45 days to consider an appeal. Explain to us where are we in this process? Yeah, so the decision we got about two weeks ago is the culmination of years of work and about 14 months of litigation. Uh, The D.C. Circuit ruled three to zero unanimously in favor of Grayscale, vacating the SEC's denial order, which prevented GBTC from converting to an ETF. We're now in this 45 day period where we have to follow the federal rules of appellate procedure uh, that gives the SEC the opportunity, if they wish, to request a rehearing on the case. Um, the market reaction, the investor reaction has been very, very positive. Uh, there's not only a lot of enthusiasm in the underlying Bitcoin market, um, but certainly seen a tremendous tick up in volumes in GBTC and interest, um, have seen the discount to net asset value continue to shrink uh, since the decision came out. Um, but all of us, Grayscale, our investors, the team as a whole, the community, uh, waiting for this 45 day period. Yeah, so the problem here for the SEC, it seems to me, the, the court squarely rejected, folks, if you didn't hear this, it rejected the very basis on which the SEC has been denying a spot Bitcoin ETF for the past several years. The court said, in essence, hey, you guys approved a futures-based Bitcoin product. The futures in the spot market are... All right, we've heard all that. We get it. A Ripple bailout? No, that's a bailout I can get behind what that refers to. This is a thread by um, Wrath of Kahneman. This is wild. He's even got the popcorn out. Turns out There's a soap opera surrounding the Ripple acquisition of Fortress Trust. Bankruptcy, theft, Terra. This is a ride, so buckle up. Um, On September 7th, Fortress issued a statement they were compromised by a third party. The announcement was largely damage control. They mentioned uh, we also have some big company news. Then the next day, Ripple announces that they're acquiring Fortress Trust. 
On the 11th, the Bloc reported the, the security breach. On the 7th, forced Fortress's hand. Ripple stepped in and made affected customers whole as a part of the sales agreement. Ripple spokes, spokesperson said talks accelerated, but there were discussions before it. Um, and it got, the rabbit hole on this one goes a lot deeper than that, but I just wanted to hit the part where Ripple made these people whole. So Ripple actually did a bailout as they bought this company. I, don't see, I haven't seen Vitalik Buterin doing any bailouts. Didn't see Sam Bankman Freed doing any bailouts. And those are the people that the SEC is meeting with. They're suing Ripple. These guys, Ripple, who always seem to be doing the right things. Gary Gensler is going to be put in front of Congress today. And of course, Elizabeth Warren has already given him the questions, I'm sure. So, and the congressmen that do ask him questions, it'll be nothing more than questions. There will be no action, nothing done to fire him or anything like that. So it'll be standard stuff. But the important thing is that Gary Gensler is doubling, tripling, quadrupling down says the vast majority of crypto tokens meet the investment contract test. So he's, he's a stubborn little guy. Um, and so then Coinbase takes a swipe uh, on the way. Brian Armstrong from Coinbase yesterday said he ought to be fired, I think. Um, and then they put this out in the lead up to him sitting in front of Congress. Regulatory and legislative uncertainty puts 4 million jobs at risk by 2030. The U.S. is at risk of losing out on 1 million developer jobs and 3 million related to non-technical jobs over the next seven years as Web3 development increasingly moves overseas. On average, U.S. is losing almost 2% of the Web3 developer share every year. That means high quality, good paying jobs are leaving the U.S. to innovate in locations with better conditions like clear regulation or a commitment to techno technological leadership. The U.S.'s share of global Web3 development has already dropped by 40%. It's almost, it's almost as if the people running the United States are giving away our crypto business just like they gave away our manufacturing base. Folks, this is all intentional, all by design. These are people that are intentionally trying to destroy this country. You can't convince me otherwise at this point. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that these people are pure evil. Thanks for listening.